Praise God, we are together again for a meaningful moment with the Lord Jesus Christ in our Thursday Zoom meeting. This is Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry, founded in June 2019 by Pastor Grace Kikuvi. This is a teaching and a deliverance ministry. We have Zoom meetings every Thursday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. We also have crossover midnight prayers, Zoom meetings every last Friday of the month. And should you wish to get in touch with us, we are available on YouTube and on phone number 0721-712-774, which is for Pastor Grace. Um, my name is Esther Getty. I'm saved and I love the Lord. And I'm a member of Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry and the speaker for today by God's grace. Thank you so much for finding time to join us. And you're most welcome. Our topic today is understanding our identity in Christ Jesus, which leads to activation to our God-given faith. Understanding our identity in Christ Jesus, who we are in Christ Jesus, which leads to activation to our God-given faith. I will start on faith. It is a gift from God. Every human heart has been created with a vacuum which uh, causes us to yearn for God, according to Ecclesiastics 3, verse 11. What confuses men mostly is what to fill in this vacuum. It's an eternity which has to be filled with eternal virtues of God or the will of God, which I term it as faith. For the righteous, uh, this is where our um, relationship starts with God. And it also ends here with our maker. According to Hebrews 12, verse 2, we read that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible also describes faith in um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And uh, also, without faith, it is just impossible to please our God. We see in the same chapter, Hebrews 11, verse 7, that um, Noah believed and was moved by godly fear and built the ark even without seeing what was predicted to him by God. He just believed and did what he was told to do. And that is what God wants us to do. God desires to live by faith in him and uh, Whoever comes to him must believe that he exists or that he is and is a great rewarder to those who seek him diligently. I insist, yes, he's a rewarder to all those who diligently seek him. According to Hebrews 11 verse 6, faith is also a dunamis power mighty power residing in our hearts that overcomes the whole world. This we read in First John 5, verse 4. As long as we release this same power in a prayer, every obstacle is overcome, even the whole world. Hallelujah. Hence, the devil's target is to get the believer 
out of faith. Always. This is his target against us. And once he wins, he never stops. He keeps on trying over and over until he wins to get this strategy on us as believer. And uh, once he gets us down, we become uh, his powerless legal captives in his kingdom. And unless God delivers us. But praise be to God because his word says in Isaiah 49 that he will also deliver the, the captives of the mighty, the legal captives of the mighty. So the devil has no power over ev any believer if he knows his stand in God by faith. Having faith and living by faith is mandatory for a victorious Christian. And gaining wisdom and revelation of the principles of God's kingdom gives us a leeway for the power of God to be made manifest over all power of sin and darkness in our lives in the world we live today. Again, faith does a mighty work in us of transforming us believers from glory to glory, becoming like Christ Jesus himself, as we read in Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. And I could continue about faith because faith is foundational and it is a very wide subject. We move by faith. We live in this world as Christians by faith. We cannot receive anything from God. Nothing can work for us um, in the spiritual world except through faith. We cannot receive anything except through faith. Uh, and I believe I have given this introduction in the best way I could, and uh, all of us have a good understanding of what faith is. So shall we get to the powerful uh, book of Romans 8, which uh, opens and renews our spiritual minds about um, understanding our faith and the power we have in Christ Jesus and even the identity. Romans 8 describes our typical identity in Christ Jesus. When we get saved, our spirits get changed. They, they get rejuvenated and our spirits becomes exactly alike with Christ. There's no difference. The old nature lives and the new nature comes in, according to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. But our minds, our bodies, they just remain the same. So it is not um, a surprise to see a born-again person sinning. And uh, one marvels, how come this one has no different with uh, somebody who lives in the world in sin? He is not, or she is not, uh, we cannot judge her that uh, he or she is not saved. He is or she is genuinely saved. It's only that he or she has not taken the opportunity to renew his or her mind by the word of God. Once the mind is not renewed, there is no change. The mind will take over, the flesh will take over, even if the spirit has been changed by God. The old nature is only renewed with word of truth, as there is no other way except by studying and uh, believing and getting revelation through the word of God. This is how we change our old nature to the new nature. And uh, 
war unto us because the devil knows about this secret or this loophole which we have as Christians of not renewing our minds. So he ignites uh, some spirits of laziness, ignorance in us of studying the word and uh, being diligent in uh, walking by faith and he releases all sorts of temptation leading to condemnation. But praise be to God because in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, it says there's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. So unless you know this truth, you can walk in condemnation all the days of your life here on earth and you are a Christian, a born again Christian. So, you, there's no condemnation at all for you. Why? Because Christ has died for us and paid for all that which was condemned on us. He did it at the cross for us. Once we stand firm with this truth and resist the devil, he will definitely flee. Uh, point number two, we get it at uh, verse 14 about our identification in Christ Jesus as his sons. We are sons of God. But there's a condition here. If we are led by the Spirit of God. By the Spirit living in us, after getting saved, it does not guarantee his lordship or his leading if we don't agree and cooperate with him. Um, that's why we, many of us are saved, spirit-filled, speak in tongues, but um, are living questionable lives or weak lives, lives which are not fruitful because we have not uh, yielded to the Holy Spirit and allowed him to lead us all through our lives. We are not walking in the Spirit. We are walking in the flesh. Verse 16 of uh, Romans 8 confirms also that uh, we have the privilege of being sons of God because we have been adopted by God the Father. And our spirits cry, Abba, Father. We are children of God. This is marvelous. It does not even end there. If we are children because of this adoption, then we are heirs of God. Hallelujah. And joint heirs with Christ Jesus. This should motivate us. We are so privileged. Praise the Lord. I give God glory for this understanding. Um, as children of God, we go through sufferings, we go through temptations, but these light sufferings, the Bible records with Christ in us, cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed when Christ Jesus comes. In fact, in uh, the same chapter of Romans 8, which we are dealing with now, Verse 19 says that the world is awaiting for the manifestation of the true sons of God, of whom we are. Because we all have the mandate to manifest the power of God through revelation and through being led by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. We also have another great privilege. I'm trying to motivate you. I'm trying to put up the fire to keep it burning in the altars of our hearts. I want us to come, our faith to come up alive this day and be strong and stand against the enemy powerfully. Addressing him. We should address issues and obstacles. We should not run away from the devil and temptations and trials. We should address them. In verse 26 of Romans 8 and 34 also, um, we can read, He lives to make intercession for us in heaven. This is Jesus Christ himself 
who is seated at the right hand of the Father. When we pray, the Lord Jesus hears and answers these prayers and makes intercession, uh, telling the Father, your child, your daughter, is making petitions and pleas and supplications to you, Father. So grant her her favors according to your will. So when we pray, our prayers are not in vain. They go up and their angels will receive them. The Lord Jesus intercepts them for us. And this is great to note that uh, we are not alone. He's always with us. Praise the Lord. This is powerful. I love this. Just the thought of it gives me new hope, new strength, and uh, determination even to pray more and to pray always because I know my prayers are being received in heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And if there's any prayer that God the Father will not ignore, it is the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, we move on further. I want us to go deeper in Romans 8. In fact, in your own time, you can just go back to this chapter. It is a very powerful chapter in the book of Romans, which um, enables the believer to know himself or herself better, who you are in Christ Jesus, so that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You can stand on your own. You can encourage yourself. You can encourage others through this scripture. In Romans 8, verse 29 says, and this is also very, very powerful. He knows us. He knew us before the foundations of the world. Not only knew, knowing us, he chose us. He also called us. And he also justified us to be conformed to his own image. This is awesome very deep and a very lovely that he knew us even before we were born, even before the foundations of this world. He knew today me and you would be here. And he set us apart. He chose us. We are holy unto him. The Bible says in First Peter 2, 9 that we are a holy, holy nation, a nation called by his name. A royal priesthood and we have all sorts of titles we are even kings unto him we are priests unto him praise the lord we are not a small people and we are not ordinary people nobody should pull you down nobody should put you uh, under pressure we should always be above circumstances in the name of jesus because indeed we are who the Bible says we are. We are what God says we are in the name of Jesus. He knew us. He chose us. I repeat this verse 29. It is so appealing to me. And it is so touching. It is so rich. He knew us. He chose us. He called us. Justified us. To be conformed to his own, own, personal image. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in verse 31, then the apostle run, rounds up this uh, awesome chapter of Romans 8, saying, asking, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, powerful, the creator of heavens and earth, where our help comes from, the owner and the founder of everything, all the foundations of the earth, the sea, the heavens, is for you and me, my brother and my sister. What is that thing that can shake you? Nidhambi gani hiyo ambo itakusumbua? Nobody, and precisely nobody can be against us. 
so that should give us a strength that should cause our you know feeble limbs and our shaking knees to be strong this afternoon and from now to be able to walk with our heads up our sh shoulders squared having hope and a faith in what god says we are who we are in the name of jesus nobody absolutely nobody can be against us take it with you today and don't live the way you've been living in fear and intimidation uh, verse 33 paul apostle paul continues to ask the same questions and even elaborates further who shall bring a charge against the elect we are the elect of the lord and who can bring a charge against us? Nobody can charge us. Nobody can condemn us. Even if uh, we may uh, have a, we may have court cases, we may be prosecuted. But even there, the Lord stands as our advocate. Hallelujah. Nobody, for it is, can be against us. For it is God Himself who is for us and who justifies us. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul continues to break it down further. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He details it. Is it tribulation? Is it distress? No. Is it persecution? No. Is it famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril or sword? Nobody. Oh, what a joy. This he confirms in verse 35. Yet in all these things he says, we are more than conquerors. Not on our own. In Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Through him, Christ Jesus, who conquered death and the grave and who loved us. Praise the Lord. And he has given the power, us the power and authority. He's given us the key of David in our hands to open and nobody shall shut those doors of blessings and to shut every wicked agenda of the enemy and nobody can open it in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm getting excited. And I'm enjoying these truth details which are setting us free from Romans 8 today. I leave verse 38 for you to go and finish and let it be as a serving topping cream to this delicious meal to all of us today. And uh, may it be registered today and even confess before the enemy that we will never, never again be victims but victors of the cross we will never again be above we will never again be below but uh, above always we will never be moving backward but always and forever moving forward in the name of jesus i believe we are all blessed by these details and uh, now I want us to bow our heads for the word of prayer. And that our faith has gotten a boost today. Our minds are renewed. Our souls are refreshed. They are very much refreshed. And there is no better joy than being in the presence of the Lord. I believe all of us have been ministered to. I believe all of us have been transformed. I believe all of us are going to be uh, vessels that are going to carry this message across to the world around us, that we are more than conquerors, that we are who we are in Christ Jesus. And when we go to our closets to pray, we will pray in a faith with understanding, even as Mama has been taking us through the series of understanding prayers in the last two weeks. And shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer, please, and thank God for what is done and granted us today. 
we are all blessed. And Father, how grateful we are for the anointing in this message of truth that has opened every bronze gate in our lives and broken every iron rod in our lives. We give you glory and honor, Father, forever and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Shalom.